Welcome to the eLog 365 ELD training video. In this video, we will go over how to use the eLog 365 application. This application can be downloaded from the Apple App Store or from the Google Play Store. Once you've downloaded it, please go ahead and use the username and password provided to you to log in. So this is not my first time logging in. That's why it brought me to this screen to connect to the ELD. But for first time users, uh, it will bring you to this screen to select a vehicle. So go ahead and select the unit that's been assigned to you. And once you select it, it will ask you to enter the MAC address to connect to the ELD hardware device. The MAC address is located on the PT30 device, on the ELD hardware device. You will see a sticker on one side that has the serial number and the MAC address. Please go ahead and enter the full MAC address in here. And once you do that, you can go ahead and hit connect and it will connect to the ELD hardware device via Bluetooth. It's very important that your phone's Bluetooth is on when you're doing this. If it's not on, it will not connect. Um, now again, you don't have to go into your phone settings and into the Bluetooth to connect. You connect from here but your Bluetooth needs to be on. So for this uh, instant, I'm gonna continue disconnected. This is the home screen of the application. As you can see, we're currently off duty. On the top right, we have an indication that we are not connected to the ELD device, which is that triangle, orange triangle with an exclamation mark. If you click on it, it will take you back to the connect page. So if you're not able to connect um, the first time, you can go ahead and retry from that button. Um, on the left side here, the three lines, that's the menu button. From there, you can go into all the different pages, which we will go over shortly. Now, this uh, blue button here on the top left is your night mode and your day mode um, to switch back and forth from there. And to change statuses, uh, it's very simple. You just click on the circle inside the circle anywhere and it will open up a screen to change statuses. Now from here, as you can see, I'm already off duty, so it won't let me click that, but I can go into any of my other statuses and it gives me the location. Uh, as you can see, it's 5.0 miles northeast of Clovis, California right now. And if you feel like this location is way off, you can always enter a custom location here. So, um, you know, <clears throat> need be. And then also, we always recommend that you guys um, put in a note. So, you know, it's very important every time you guys are changing statuses to put in a note. Um, you know, if you ever get pulled over down the road and, you know, they ask you, what were you doing three days ago on this on duty? You know, you don't have to think about it. If there's a note in there, the officer will know and it will save you a lot of time. So it's our very... Uh, highly recommended that you always put a note such as, you know, let's say if we're going to do a pre-trip right now. So I would just put pre-trip and in order to go into on duty, I've selected the on duty and I hit update and it will now take me on duty. So as you can see, my 14 hour clock has started and right below the circle, we see all of our other, um, you know, shifts. We have our drive, shift, break and cycle. Now on the bottom, you, we are currently in the available hour section, if you click on this recap on the bottom right, it will show you a recap of your last seven days. So that's uh, the recap. Now changing the status is pretty straightforward and I can do it one more time for you guys. I want to go into drive now. Um, click on the status and I can click on drive and I can hit update. Now be mindful that if you're connected to the ELD device, you will not have to go into drive. It will automatically go into drive for you after five miles per hour. Um, so either way, now for this uh, particular test, we're gonna go ahead and just go into drive for you guys. Okay, so now as you can see, um, I am now in my drive and the time that it's showing up here, uh, the eight hours, seven hours and 59 minutes, it's basically showing me how much time I have before I need to take my 30 minute break. So that's that. 
And now let's go ahead and go into the menu from the top left. We're currently on the status page. So that's this home page. Now the second page is the logs page. This is where you're able to view the last 14 days of your logbooks. Um, uh, also, we you can see 14 days of your logbooks here, but when you send logbooks to the DOT uh, or do an FMCSA transfer, they will only get seven days of your logs. So this is just for the driver to be able to see all of his logs and to be able to certify them. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, yesterday's logbook, which is Friday, November 19th. And as you can see, I was off duty the whole day. So I'm gonna go ahead and certify this logbook. Um, on, the on the bottom, you can see we're currently on the events page, and then there's a form page, and then there's a certify page. So um, from the events page, you can basically see you know, all of your events. As you can see, there's nothing here. Uh, up on the top right, you see this I. If you click on the I, it will basically give you an inspection preview of what the officer will see when he sees your logbook. So that gives you guys a little bit of uh, you know idea of what the the CHP or the officer will see um, if you guys want to do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the form page here. Um, it is important that you guys enter in your trailer number and your shipping documents. So for yesterday, uh, you know I didn't because I didn't do anything. Um, the the shipping documents is already none and the trailer is already none and the system will keep it none unless there's a status change and that will indicate that you guys are doing something so you will have to enter in shipping documents at that time so for this purpose it's already none we're going to go ahead and click save and from there we're going to go ahead and go into the certify page and as you can see um you know i have not signed anything here so in this where it says image not available um, you need to hit the clear signature button right below that before you can sign. So I'm going to go ahead and sign now. I've signed. I'm going to hit agree. Now this signature will save for the future. So, you know, you don't need to go ahead and, and, and keep signing uh, over and over again. So here, um, as you can see, um, I have, you know, these are the statuses that I've changed. If I click on this I, it will show me. Uh, you know exactly what the officer will be seeing. Okay, so for today's, as I'm saying, you know, we're on duty. If we come into the form page, it's important that we enter in our shipping documents. The system will not let you certify a, a logbook unless you've entered in the shipping documents. So because it's a requirement by the FMCSA, so the shipping document can be the pickup number or the bill of lading number for the load that you're picking up. And to do that, you just click on the shipping documents and then you can add as many as you need here. So, you know, and you just hit this add button and you have multiple, you can do multiple. So it's uh, completely up to you and you just hit the back button. And once you've done that, uh, this save button will go green. Now, once I came back the first time, it wasn't green. I had to click on the shipping docs again. Sometimes you know, there's a little glitch, so you may have to do that, but you do that and you hit save and that's the, your form has been saved. So, you know, that's what you need to do for the shipping docs. And same thing with the trailer. You also need to enter in your trailer number, uh, you know, whatever that number may be. And you just hit add and that's it. So the trailers are entered from the driver's side um, every time. So it makes it a little bit easier for the driver to be able to do that. Um, so it's same thing, you have all of these logbooks, 14 days to certify. And as you can see, the Friday, the November 19th, I've, I've done the form, that's green, and I've certified, so that's green. For today, um, I've already done the form, but I'm not going to certify until tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's going to be done tomorrow. So this is the logs page. Now uh, we'll go into the DVIR section. The DVIR section is pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see, there's no records here. In order to enter a record, we're going to go ahead and click on the plus button on the right, top right, and it will pick up your location. It will pick up your odometer reading. Um, you already have that we're in vehicle number 001. Now, um, you will need to sign on this, on this one as well for the first time. So you can hit that clear signature and, and it will let you sign. Now, 
if you guys have defects, so as you can see, we have vehicle number 0001, and then right next to it, it says defects. Now, if everything is good, you don't need to do anything. All you do is just sign and hit save right on the bottom or the sign button. But if there are defects, let's say you have some tires that need to be changed or the brakes are low or, or, or whatnot. So vehicle 001 to the right of that says defects. We click on that. So we have some pre, um, you know, identified defects that you can select from. Now, let's say, you know, whatever you, you see as a defect is not listed in here. Um, you know, you can just go ahead and write it in the remarks. So you can just type it right here that, you know, tires need to be changed. Now, if you are not writing it or not clicking on a defect from here, um, you need to hit the status of this or actually not the status. Sorry, I'm going to have to backtrack from there. Um, the status is vehicle condition satisfactory. So if you are writing that the tires need to be changed and the defect is not in here, I would suggest that you select a defect from here as well, just so the status can be changed to has defects. Um, so basically, you know, oh, there's tires right there. So we would hit tires and hit OK. And now this status right under remarks, it says has defects. So that's important for the officer to be able to know if you've done a pre-trip and you know so one of the things with the dvir that a lot of drivers uh, misunderstand is that you know that you should just go ahead and hit sign and everything is okay but if you guys are actually like let's say you're really you know your trailer tires need to be changed um you know you can go ahead and hit the defects as tires put as a remark tires need to be changed and if you have that in there, you get pulled over at a scale or someplace, most likely if they see that you've done a DVIR and that you've noted on there that the tires need to be changed, um, they won't make you change them right on the spot because they know that you're aware of the situation and that you're going to do it once you get back and all that good stuff. But when we don't do a DVIR and we don't put in the, the issues that are, you know, with the truck or the trailer, then they will make you, you know, at the scales. I'm sure many of you have, have been through that. So um, once you've done the DVIR, you're going to go ahead and hit sign. And as you can see, we can see the D, uh, DVIR here and it has one defect. So that's how to perform a DVIR. Now we're going to go ahead and click on the menu button again. Um, the next uh, page is DOT inspection. Now from here, um, this is if you're getting pulled over by the, the, the police or you're, if you're at a scale, CHP, whatever the uh, case may be, you're doing a DOT inspection. So there's a few ways that this can be for, performed. Most likely they will want you to send the logbooks via the FMCSA um, you know, web services transfer. And, or if you're in a situation where there's no internet or there's you know not enough connectivity for you to send that you can also they can also do the inspection on your device meaning either your tablet or whatever you're using to uh, use the ELD so if you're in a situation where there's no internet you just hit the first button that says start inspection and what that will do is that will show the officer today's logbook and the last seven days of his logs so we'll not let him go past the last seven days so um, that would be if there's no internet. Now, if he wants or she wants you to send them the log books, uh, you can hit on the second button that says send logs. And when you're sending the logs via the FMCSA data transfer, they usually give you their badge number. So you type that badge number in the comment section, whatever that may be. And then the data transfer type, you're gonna need to change that to web services. And you hit okay, and you just hit send. And that will automatically send, um, you know, today's logbook and the last seven days. So eight days of logs will go to them. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, if you need to email them the logbooks, um, the third button is to email them. And you just type in the email and it will send the eight days of logbooks to that email. Now, you can also send these email, these logbooks to yourself if you need to. So you can come in here and just type in your email and it will be sent to that email address. Um, now the last button is the information packet 
a lot of times, uh, you know, when when drivers get pulled over, they may not have the proper user manual or the information packet and the the DOT officers. That's a requirement for the drivers to have in the truck. So the DT, DOT officers can give you a ticket for that. So what we've done is go ahead and given you guys that information packet in this uh, DOT inspection page. The last button, if you click on it, it has both the user manual and the instructions. So if you're ever pulled over and you, you find out you don't have that user manual in the truck, you have it in this application. And um, so it's, it's not required that you have a printout of it. So you can show them from here and that's also legal. So you guys will be good on that aspect. Um, so that's basically the DOT inspection page there. Now the next page is the rules page. This is kind of just straightforward. Click on it, tells you, you know, what cycle you're on and, and what is allowed in terms of personal conveyance, yard moves and, and all that good stuff. Okay, so there's nothing to do on here. This is just a view only page. Now, if you're running a team and uh, you need to run it with a co-driver, so let's say, um, you know, I've already, you know, I'm going to start my shift. So before um, um, you start your shift, I would, if you're running with a co-driver, um, you need to go into the logs page and you need to go into the today's book. Let's say I'm going to be taking off today. And we need to go into the form and we need to add a co-driver right under shipping documents. So from here, when you click it, you will see all the, the drivers that you can select from that are within your company. So, you, you know, we're going to go ahead and just select one and I'm going to hit OK and save. So that will um, make an indication on your logbook that you have added a co-driver. Now, it's just simple as that. Now, once you've completed your shift. Let's say, you know, I'm going to go here, I'm going to change this status, I'm going to go into sleep, and I've completed my shift, everything's done, and it's my co-driver's to turn to drive. Then you would come into the menu, go into the co-driver, select that co-driver, he or she would hit switch, and it's going to ask them now to enter in the username and password. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in the username and password for this driver. Okay. So as you can see, um, if we were to be connected, it will not bring you to the screen. But since we were not connected to the device, it will bring you to the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue disconnected. Now, as you can see, without me first logging out, Hardeep Gill, my co-driver, is now assigned with me. So if you're driving teams, you don't need to log out. And the other driver doesn't need to log in like that. You initially just go into the switch co-driver or the co-driver screen from the menu and you switch the co-driver from here. Okay. So again, uh, if you guys are driving team, do not, don't be like, okay, I'm driving now and it's my turn and I'm using the, the ELD and then I log out and the other person logs in because what happens then is that you guys, even though you're driving together, you have two separate log books that don't show each other's information in terms of showing the co-driver on there. And when you guys get pulled over by the DOT or an, at an, an inspection station, they will get you guys for that. So it's very important if you're driving with the co-driver that you, um, you know, go through this co-driver and switch co-driver stuff. So, um, you know, that's, that's how that, that should work. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back to mine. Okay, so... It's easy to switch back and forth. So, you know, and it asks for the username and password for privacy purposes. So somebody doesn't just use your, uh, you know, as a co-driver and mess up your hours and stuff like that. So now I'm going to go back and hit on the menu. We went through the co-driver. Um, the next um, page is the select vehicle page. 
Um, that's the same thing that, that we saw when we initially started. So if you're switching a truck, let's say you're going from 001 to a different truck, you can click on the menu, click on the select vehicle. You will have a list of your trucks here. Select the one you're on, enter the Mac number for that particular truck and that device, and, uh, and you'll be on your way. So that's uh, pretty straightforward from there. Then you have the last three, which is the account. This is just your company information, uh, your information, and uh, it's just also a, just a view only page. And the second to last button is the information packet. And you also saw this in the DOT inspection packet uh, or the inspection page. And this is again, just the user manual and the, the instruction sheet for you guys in case you don't have that in the truck. And the last button is the logout button. And that's just pretty straightforward. Um, you know, and that's, that's it. If you guys, if you guys ever have any issues or you guys need help, um, please reach out to us. Our 24 hour helpline is 1-800-556-7105. And uh, you can call down there. They speak English, they speak Punjabi. Um, you know, reach out to us if you guys need help. It's 24 hours a day. Okay guys, thank you and have a great day and stay safe.